freaky eater is someone who takes an eating habit to the extreme. 22-year-old Josh has an obsession with pizza. Pizza for breakfast, pizza for lunch, pizza for dinner. God, I love the pizza. And it's taking a serious toll on his health. Josh's uncle David is desperate for someone to help. If it's left unchecked, he is going to kill himself. Can specialists Mike Dow and JJ Virgin break this dangerous addiction? This is how much pizza you eat in a year. Damn. In order to save his stomach. This is poisonous to your body. And his life. This is incredibly dangerous to your health. If we do not help him, Josh could die. My name is David, and Josh, my nephew, is a freaky eater. 22-year-old Josh eats pizza three meals a day. Some good stuff. A total of 1,800 pounds every single year, 80 times more than the average person. Josh's pizza consumption is to excess. It's gotten to the point where it's a compulsion. I crave pizza every time I want a meal. Right now, I want pizza. I don't know what made me want it. I just want it. He'll eat it hot cold, one day old, frozen, microwaved. Josh's only nutrition comes from the 2,000 cups of white flour, 250 cups of tomato sauce, and 230 pounds of cheese that he eats every year. God, I love the pizza. Josh's diet concerns me, scares me really, because I feel like if it's left unchecked, that he is going to kill himself. When Josh was a child, he ate a variety of foods. Joshua was not a picky eater when he was younger. The picky eating didn't start until he actually had money to buy his own food. Starting in third grade, Josh was able to buy his own lunches, and that's when pizza became a problem. On Fridays, if you waited till the second bell, after the lunch lady had extras, um, she'd give you an extra big slice of pizza. Soon, Josh was eating pizza whenever he could get his hands on it, and gradually, other foods disappeared from his diet. The last time I could remember eating a vegetable was probably fifth grade, when my mom forced me to eat some, and I, and I ate some just to disguise the other hand, grabbing it in the napkin to throw it away. Despite his terrible diet, Josh pushed himself as an athlete, and he excelled in high school volleyball. Joshua the athlete was actually quite quite good. During high school, he was MVP and he helped to coach the teams. And then when he started playing beach volleyball, we saw a lot of a great future for him. It was very exciting to watch him play because he was good at it. Um, and you could just tell he enjoyed it. He beamed, he smiled. Volleyball was the most important thing to me. But then three years ago, when Josh was 19, he suddenly became ill. I was at volleyball practice and I was just running and then all of a sudden I just had this <coughs> urge to just vomit. <coughs> and then it started happening day after day after day after day. And then after a month, it started happening when I was waking up and it's been going on for two and a half years. When I wake up in the morning, I have about 10 to 30 minutes of hell. I'll have a massive headache, my heart will be palpitating. I have about 10 to 30 minutes to throw up. It's like mentally just agonizing, you know, every morning waking up like that. Josh was passed from doctor to doctor over the course of three years. After countless tests and scans, not one could diagnose him. The most they could do was prescribe migraine medication. Have you actually sat down and told the doctors how much pizza you actually eat every day, every week? I told him I ate a lot of pizza, but I remember not exactly. Before Josh got sick, he was a young man with a plan. You know, he was in school, he was playing volleyball regularly, and all of his dreams of being a pro volleyball player, of finishing school, just absolutely evaporated. I lost volleyball, I lost so many friends, I lost working out, I lost going to the beach. So there's a deep, a deep hole. Forced to quit the sport that had come to define him, by the age of 20, Josh had lost everything. His athletic dreams, his friends, and his self-esteem. Come on, eat it, it's good. You can have it, I don't want it. It just has vegetables and stuff in there. Eventually, he left school and moved in with his grandmother. He 
is not eating any vegetables or any fruit. One of these days, I'm going to give up on you. As he descended deeper and deeper into depression, Josh ate more and more pizza, his one comfort. He currently eats over 469 pizzas each year, 320 slices every single month. I definitely forget about my problems when I'm eating pizza. For that moment, I'm not thinking about volleyball. So whatever's going on after I ate that pizza, I like that feeling. So how much of this pizza do you think you're going to be able to eat? I'll probably eat my half. I think for Josh, the amount of pizza that he eats is at the very least, if it does not cause his illness, it aggravates it. I could answer 100% to my heart of hearts that I do not believe my diet has anything to do with the way that I feel physically. There's way more foods that are way more unhealthy than pizza. Josh's life is spiraling out of control, and he needs help before it's too late. With Josh's health declining by the day, his uncle has finally convinced him to meet with freaky eater specialist, Dr. Mike Dow and nutritionist, JJ Virgin. Over the next two days, they'll attempt to help him break his addiction and get his life back on track. My uncle's always told me he's concerned with the way I eat. To have him have some other people join in now makes me really realize how concerned he is. Hi. Hi, I'm JJ. I'm a certified nutrition specialist. I've been teaching people how to get healthy for the past 25 years, and I've literally worked with thousands of people from all walks of life. Josh, Dr. Mike Dow. I'm a licensed psychotherapist with specializations in eating disorders and addictive behaviors. We've heard from your uncle that there's some really serious health stuff going on. So he brought us in to all basically right. change your life. <sighs> JJ and I are absolutely the people that are going to get through to Josh. He's already been to doctors. What he needs are people that are going to get to the heart of the matter, how his psychology, how his nutrition, all of these things are impacting the way he feels, the way he eats. It sounds like there's a lot of people in your family who are very worried about you. Are you worried about you? <sighs> yeah. And are you ready to do something about it? I think I'm at a, at a point now where I'm willing to try anything to, to improve my life. Thanks Good luck. luck. I'm kind of apprehensive if they're trying to make a link between my illness and the way I eat. Right. I'm not sure that's connected, but I am definitely willing to hear what they had to say. Coming up, will a dose of shock therapy convince Josh to change? So Josh, this is how much pizza you eat in a year. Damn. Josh refuses to believe that his all-pizza diet is responsible for the mysterious illness that has destroyed his life. I lost volleyball, I lost so many friends. There's a deep hole. Freaky Eater specialists Dr. Mike Dow and JJ Virgin are hoping that some shock therapy will open Josh's eyes to the effect of his disastrous diet. So Josh, this is how much pizza you eat in a year. Oh. 469 boxes. You look shocked. Yeah. In this box, white flour, sugary sauce, cheese, salt, the amount you are getting in a year, 230 pounds of cheese that's loaded with saturated fat. Damn. Nearly 2,000 cups of white flour. That's fast track to diabetes and heart disease right there. I'm beyond myself. Shock therapy is really realizing the amount of detrimental stuff you are putting in your body. Seeing it, presenting it, helps the patient to say, wow, this is what I'm doing to myself. We've got one more thing we need to show you. This here represents the fat in those 469 pieces. This is 80 pounds of the fattest fat of all trans fat, saturated fat, consuming this amount of this type of fat is gonna give you heart disease or cancer or diabetes. It's just a matter, Josh, of which one's gonna get you first. It looked like vomit. It really hit me that like what I was putting into my body could possibly be like what I was throwing up. I want you to actually feel what it is like to choose to put this in your body. And we are going to ask you to pour all of this fat into that vat. So just pour it in there? Yep. The 
pectin is your body and your veins. What does that mean? Probably a heart attack. Yeah. Oh my God, I could have had a heart attack. What I want to ask you to do is to pick up that silver vat of fat, and I want you to hold it for as long as you can. How does that feel? It's heavy. Heavy? When it's ready to go, I just want you to drop it. <sighs> oh. It definitely felt good to throw the fat and be able to do it and get it away from me as far as possible. Now, there's one more thing. We've arranged to get some blood tests done because we really need to see what kind of damage you've caused with your 469 pizzas a year. So we're going to go out and get those now. All right, let's get okay. to work. Before the lab results come back, Dr. Dow wants to get to the root of Josh's addiction to pizza by bringing him to the place that triggered his downward spiral. It's been a while since you picked up one of these, huh? Yeah. Tell me about how you got into volleyball. My mom actually forced me, forced me to play. She said that we all had to be two sport athletes in high school. Did you want to play volleyball? Once I started playing and I saw that I had promise, I, I realized that maybe this is a, a way that I could kind of show them that I could accomplish something, be good at something. If you were talking to your mom at that time, what was it that you needed from her that you didn't get? The approval in my eyes. I don't, I don't think I was still on the track to be getting that approval. You needed their approval. Yeah. In assessing Josh's self-worth, he didn't have very many things that made him feel good enough about himself like he did when he was an athlete. When he stopped getting that, he turned to cheese pizza. So he used this object, this food, to get things that he was not getting in his life. When you started playing volleyball, this was actually something that made you feel really good about yourself. Yeah. And then tell me about pizza coming in. Once I lost volleyball, that's when I started to realize uh, I didn't have control of anything anymore. So there were some things going on in your life that you were not in control of. I think it all just kind of started once the sickness happened. Yeah. Once I wasn't able to play volleyball anymore, it all kind of just crumbled away. Yeah. And, and then I was just desperately grasping for something. And you didn't have anything else, so you gravitated towards pizza. So everything in the way you felt, the way you thought was, I can't control that, but I can control this. Yeah. We have to figure out what are the things in your life that you can start to feel good about. Uh -huh. Not until today did I ever start to really make the connection between what I was eating and why I was eating it. Before, it was nothing more than I'm hungry and I feel like eating pizza. Now I'm starting to think maybe it's more. Ready to take the next step? Yeah. Coming up, will the lab tests finally reveal the truth behind Josh's illness? Wow. Josh has been grappling with a mysterious illness for the past three years. I'll have a massive headache. My heart will be palpitating. And then I have about 10 to 30 minutes to throw up. Determined to find the answer behind his illness, JJ arranged for Josh to have specialized testing to look for a link between his physical condition and his diet. I just got the blood test back from the lab and the news is not good. You've had food allergy testing, right? Mm -hmm. So there's food allergies, and that's like when you eat a peanut and your, you know, your throat closes up. Mm -hmm. And then there's another type of response. It's an immune response called a delayed food sensitivity. Mm -hmm. This is very different. This happens because you eat the same food over and over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, your body can actually start to become sensitive to it and starts to have a toxic response to it. But worse than that, your body actually craves it. Mm -hmm. So you eat it and the, the reaction to it's delayed. You might eat it and eight hours later you start to feel worse. So you don't directly tie it to the food but your body starts to create an immune response that makes you crave the very food that's hurting you. Mm -hmm. So what do you think, hearing that, what do you think you probably are reacting to? The pizza, the, or the cheese or something that's in there. Bingo. What? See these greater than 2,000? Mm -hmm. That's a huge response. See how you're written severe? Wow. The dairy, that's toxic for you. Right. Right? Yeah. It's just exactly like poison. This is poisonous to your body. The type of lab tests that we're looking at now are very different. They aren't done traditionally by doctors, and so they've been missed. I'm 
overwhelmed with emotion right now. I don't even, I don't even know what to think. I would have bet any amount of money that the, my diet had nothing to do with my sickness. And now I know my diet was my sickness and it changes everything. Wow. It took three years and now it's just finally, we have, we have an answer. All of it's fixed with food. Damn, this be hard. I gotta do what I gotta do, you know? Josh now faces the daunting task of removing pizza from his diet completely. But JJ and Dr. Dow have a plan to keep him on track. So what I did was put together a menu to make this, again, simple for you, yeah. OK? And so I laid out some breakfasts for you. There are going to be things that you've been eating already, uh -huh. OK, with a healthy twist. I've created a menu plan for Josh that's going to be a bit of a challenge. What I tried to do was take things that he was already eating or already familiar with and then put a challenge in there, like vegetables. Well, you have homework for me. That is creating quality time so that you can get your needs met in your relationships that are important to you. Josh's homework is a combination of the nutritional plan put together by JJ, and he's going to be improving his life by spending time with his family, improving his relationships. Are these homework assignments something that you are clear about? I'm, they're very clear I'm gonna do them. Okay. Going cold turkey is hard because dairy is in every single food Josh loves. But also, when he stops eating it, his body is going to scream. He's going to crave it so much. Coming up, Josh tries to adapt to a pizza-free diet. Mm. But will the temptation prove too much? <laughs> you could tell that he wanted to take a bite. It hurts. Dr. Dow and JJ have given Josh the tools to conquer his addiction. But now the true test is managing it on his own. The first couple days that Josh makes this change are going to be brutal. But within a week, he's going to feel like a new man. That fatigue, the headaches, they'll be gone. It's Josh's first full day without pizza in three years. And as JJ predicted, his body is suffering the effects of withdrawal. It's all tough right now. You know, no dairy whatsoever, no sugar. I do not feel physically strong. I'm always hungry. The following day, Josh takes Dr. Dow's advice and spends some time with his siblings for emotional support. Brother. What's up? Brought you some food. But each meal without pizza is a struggle. Right now, every time I have a meal, my body's wishing I had cheese on it. I just miss the taste of pizza, really. I think I've been eating it tastes that good. Emotionally, it's draining thinking about every meal and what I used to be able to eat and what I can eat now, and having to try to eat all these vegetables, it's really frustrating. I'm really agitated. Mm. Eating vegetables every day sucks. It's Josh's third day without pizza, and physically, he's feeling much better, but he also finds himself surrounded by temptations. You know, I went down the aisle where I usually get pizza, and it was just like, everything looked so appealing. I took extreme self-control on the third day. So three days, I think, is pushing it. Finally on day five, JJ and Dr. Dow feel Josh is ready for his toughest challenge yet, an Italian dinner without pizza. Josh has made major changes in his diet, and this is no easy task. What may be even more difficult for Josh is resisting temptation in real life situations. What Josh doesn't know is that his entire family is waiting to join him. How you doing? Hello, How you doing? I was very surprised to see my whole family sitting there. I was kind of nervous. Looking at that menu, I realized I'd never looked at a menu before. I can't be ignorant. You know, I might need to eat some things I'm not gonna enjoy just to reap the benefits. I'm Maria, I'm taking the order tonight. Well, we looked at that menu and I thought there's nothing on here that he's eaten in the last 10 years. What is he gonna pick? I guess I'm gonna be getting the shrimp and clams the Teresa. Wow. <laughs> clams? Love it. Amazing. I never thought I'd see the day where we'd go out to dinner and Josh would order anything other than pizza. I was shocked. <laughs> Can I get the classic margarita pizza? Oh. <laughs> 
I was actually very glad that Josh's brother ordered the pizza because those real life behavioral triggers when somebody's gonna have the pizza, that's what Josh needs to experience. And I could smell the pizza, I could smell the bread, I could smell the cheese. It was tough. Very good. good. Very good. Good, right? Yes. I can't bring myself to believe that this is actually it. As every day that goes by and he feels better, my confidence grows. Josh, here, here, here. here. Thank you. Graduating to good health. I don't think words can express, you know, how grateful I am. With just a few small changes to his diet, Josh has gone from someone with nothing to live for no school, no career, and no future to someone who has hope and a clear path to getting his life back. I'm feeling less nauseous. I feel like I'm thinking more clearly. I feel like I stared death in the face and I made a choice and now I'm starting over and I have the potential to be bigger, better, and stronger than I was before. I can't believe that, you know, through all of this, pizza was my enemy.